So with the new PvP update in full swing, a lot of people are already well on their way to getting the new level 100 curses unlocked. However, I know that some of you may be struggling with getting a crew together, or you may just want to work on your solo PvP skills. I know that this particular update to Sea of Thieves has prompted a lot of my crew wanting to get better at PvP and solo slooping. If that's the case for you, then this video should be just what you're looking for. I have another video on general naval combat tips, a lot of which still apply, so watch that one too after this. I'm going to go over my top tips for solo slooping. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not the best PvPer in the world, and I know I'm probably a complete bot compared to some of the people in my community, but I do have over 2,500 hours in the game, and these are tips that I've learned from countless hours solo slooping in Adventure, and my time solo slooping in the new update for Season 8. Hello Pirates, my name is Ellie and I post regular Sea of Thieves videos on this channel. If you want to stay up to date with the game, then remember to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I put up a new video. So before we get into the specific tips, playing solo on Sea of Thieves, you need to be prepared to be running around like a blue ass fly doing everything at once. You need to get used to managing the boat all by yourself without getting flustered. This means prioritising where you need to be and when, and making sure you can get around the boat quickly and get jobs done quickly. Solo means you're on your own, and so you need to be able to build, grab helm and adjust sails when needed, as well as find time to get on cannons and actually shoot your enemy. Your helm skills need to be on point, so you can man cannons and leave the wheel during a fight. If you're solo slooping, then you need to be able to predict the trajectory of the enemy boat and angle your wheel to compensate for that and then jump onto cannons. You'll need to be constantly keeping an eye on their angle and adjusting yours accordingly. It's not an exact science, but you definitely need to be aware of where you want to be in relation to their boat and angle your wheel in a way that means you can get off it pretty regularly to shoot cannons and get repairs. You also want to be aware of things like northwest heading waves and the fact that leaving your wheel straight whilst heading northwest or west will actually drift you to the south because of how the waves push your boat. You can leave your wheel slightly turned to compensate for this. The point is you need to be good on helm for solo slooping to work. Once you've got an angle, you should always start with cannons, dial in your shots, and then once you're hitting, fire chain shots high and slightly ahead of where you were shooting your cannons. Then if you can get their mast down, follow up with blunders and curses. You then want to switch to helm and get in a rotation around their boat. Ideally, you've already compensated for this potentiality, so you won't need to adjust too much. Once you're on a rotation, you need to do as much damage as possible with cannons and blunder bombs. However, blunder bombs aren't always the play. If you're pretty close to each other and you're firing blunder bombs from your cannons, just be aware that it will knock the boat around a lot, and so you may lose your angle. This can throw a fight one way or the other pretty quickly. If you knock their boat out of your angle, then they have time to repair and reset. If you're quite far out on your rotation, then it's less of a problem, but if you're really close, then it can quickly shift the advantage to the other side. Make sure you're eating when you're on cannons. Jump off to eat if you've taken damage. A one ball in solo is devastating, and so you need to be very good at staying alive. Make sure your health is always above 90%, which is what it takes to one-shot snipe someone. And if you get clipped by a cannonball or blunder, make sure you're eating. Just don't sit on cannons with no health because that is a recipe for disaster. Keeping your boat in a rotation is important, even if you're not on a death spiral, and that's because of this new battle zone. In general, you need to be really aware of what direction your boat is heading. You need to know your boat isn't heading into a broadside if you're downstairs repairing. You might find using the windows downstairs while repairing rear holes a great way to keep your bearings during the fight. Reduce your boarding attempts while solo, especially if you're used to boarding on a duo sloop or on bigger ships. You just can't board as often when you're solo and you'll need to get used to that. You can only really board if you're sure your boat won't sink. This means you need to be in a position of having no lower deck holes and no tier three uppers. You need to allocate for the time you spend off the boat and potentially on the ferry. You also want to make sure that you have enough time to secure the sink on their ship, and so if your ship is damaged when you leave, then chances are you'll sink before they do. If you get immobilised during a fight, then prioritise cannon angle if you can. This seems to be mostly useful if you're both immobile, for example if you get each other's masts. It can definitely work in a situation where the enemy is death spiralling too, but it's better if they're not. 
You don't always want to jump up and get your mask because you're leaving yourself open to being blundered or sniped up there. If you have the angle or you can easily get the angle, then it can be beneficial to jump on or stay on cannons to keep pressure on the enemy boat. You don't want to lose any chance to get shots on your enemy. You can get the time to reset properly if you can either get a Womble or do enough damage to them that they're then busy repairing themselves, so you can rep your bow and get mobile. If you don't do this, then they're free to jump over and board you while you're repairing, so if you can, then definitely keep pressure on them even when you're immobile. If you are immobile, then you will need to time your opportunity to reset. Ideally, you don't want to be under a lot of pressure from the enemy ship. Obviously, that isn't always possible, but if you're still in their cannon line, you might not get an opportunity, and that's why the previous tip for staying on cannons while you're immobile can actually help you. When you do get a chance to reset, you need to rep your mast, straighten your wheel or angle your wheel to get away, and then drop sail. What you don't want to do is rep your mast and just drop your sail only to ram right into the enemy because you didn't check your wheel position. You need to be aware of the water level at all times and don't panic if you get to map table. One bucket will do a surprising amount when you're map table, especially if you don't have that many lowers. Prioritize tier three lowers over rear deck holes and prioritize rear deck tier three holes over all other holes in the back. By the captain voyage table is a spot that almost always ends up with tier three, so make sure you keep an eye on this area. It can mean you take on quite a lot of water without any lowers and should be an area you're always aware of. Obviously, while you're solo, you're going to be running around everywhere all over the ship and so keeping a constant eye on your water level is a given. Make sure you always grab a quick bucket even if you need to be on cannons or on helm. If you go down there to grab food, grab a bucket as well. It's a lot to deal with at first, but you do get used to it and you'll get to a point where you won't panic quite so much when you get to map table level. Obviously, being map table isn't good, but I've seen a lot of people panic way too much when water is only just map table and then they end up panic bucketing and forgetting about everything else that needs doing. Your helm and mast are the priority repairs. You always need to be able to steer and your mast should always have three planks. Even after the buffs to the sloop mast, it's very easy to get a mast down, so you should always be checking for those reps. If you can keep on top of prioritizing your repairs, then you won't feel quite so overwhelmed when you're under a lot of pressure from the enemy ship. And this is one of the keys to success as a solo slooper. Finally, be prepared to sink a lot, especially if you haven't done much solo slooping before. Solo slooping is essentially hard mode Sea of Thieves and it's not for everyone, so don't worry if it's not your idea of fun. At the end of the day, this is a video game we're talking about and if you're not having fun, then what's the point, right? That's it, those are my top 10 tips for solo slooping in Sea of Thieves. Like I said, I'm not the best at PvP and I'm not some sweat lord NAL ninja or anything, but I can hold my own in a fight and I do have a lot of experience solo. I mentioned at the beginning of the video, but I do also have a naval combat tips video which I made a while back, but a lot of the tips are definitely still relevant, so do take the time to check that out if you're looking for more Sea of Thieves PvP tips. If you found this video helpful, then please do leave a like and subscribe for more of my Sea of Thieves content. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the seas!